the Lord be with you. And with reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Lord, Lord be in our minds and on our lips and in our hearts. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and a woman was there who for 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. She was bent over, completely incapable of standing erect. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmity. He laid hands on her, and she at once stood up straight and glorified God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, said to the crowd in reply, There are six days when work should be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said, to him in reply, hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his ass from the manger and lead him out for watering? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years now, ought she not to have been set free on the Sabbath day from the bondage? When he said this, all his adversaries were humiliated and the whole crowd rejoiced at all the splendid deeds done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is really just something to be to be experienced, uh, to be in, in these holy places. Uh, we're going to visit this afternoon the three farms where St. Paul, the great apostle to the Gentiles, being a Roman citizen, he couldn't be crucified, he was, he was beheaded. And then in this spot, uh, St. Peter, the head of the apostles, not a Roman citizen, uh, was crucified on Vatican Hill. And uh, they, they tell us that, uh, and this is beautiful, when you, when you realize that Peter had denied he even knew Jesus, uh, when Jesus rebuilt him and forgave him, you love me, Peter. You love me three times. Uh, when they went to crucify Peter, uh, he said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to die as my Lord. Crucify him upside down. And you're going to see that. You'll see Peter being, his feet are on top, his head on, head's on the bottom. And he suffered the same death uh, as, as our Lord. And, and, and you can see how, how he had been transformed. I'm not worthy to die. As my Savior. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. People have been coming to these holy sites since the very beginning of the church. St. Paul's grave to St. Peter's grave. And so we're in a long line of those who have preceded us and those who will follow us. And I think if we can keep in mind that these saints, uh, and they're always together, Peter and Paul, you notice outside the two great statues, Peter and Paul, they're always together as, as the prince of the apostles, the great apostles. Peter, we think, founded the church in Rome. He founded this church. And Paul visited here, spent many years here in jail often, and of course wrote his famous letters uh, to, to, the, to the Romans, two letters that we have. And Paul, you know, um, he, he, had such, he, he had such great confidence that God had chosen him. He, he would say to the new converts, imitate me. Can you imagine getting up in front of him and saying, hey, do what I do, imitate me, I'll show you how to be a Christian. He, he really had, uh, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not going to say he had a big ego, but, but he knew, uh, he knew that God had chosen him a sinner, a persecutor, and, and he was able to get up and say, imitate me, and he treated his converts as his children. You read his letters, and he's always talking to them as a parent, and talk to them, encouraging them, telling them what to do, don't do that, and uh, very much of a, of a father, of a father uh, to his children. And uh, another thing that Paul did, uh, he addressed you, saints. It's right in his letters. He would say that the saints in Philippi, the saints in Ephesus, the saints in Rome, uh, we're, we're considered by St. Paul to be saints. 
So you have the saints on earth, and then you have the saints in heaven, and you even have the saints in purgatory. I always say purgatory, salvation is assured. It's assured. So you have the saints on earth. And, but he freely, he, he never put people down. He would always say, remember your dignity, remember your calling, and he'd give them a pedestal. And you find a pedestal there, a pedestal to climb up on. Remember who you are. You are the saints. You are the saints. And I think as we have All Saints Day coming up for our Thursday, All Saints Day, if we can realize that these great saints, Peter and Paul, they're not figures from the past. They are alive and risen in Christ, and they're very active. They're very active right now in the body of Christ. They're still in the body of Christ. They preceded us to the heavenly glory, but they are praying for us, interceding for us. They're still guiding us. They're still guiding the church. And so I, I just want to encourage you, befriend the saints. I hope you have your favorite saints. Because there are, that's our family. We're all, we're all, if you want to be a Catholic, you've got to get family life. You've got to get it. If you get family life, you get it. So the Pope, uh, what that means, if you, if you hear the Italian kids out here, Papa, leave a Papa, Papa. That means dad, Papa, dad, God, father. See? And then we have Mother Teresa. It's family, mother, father. And then we're all sisters and brothers in him. In Paul's letters, he always addresses them, dear brothers and sisters. And one of the reasons why was that when they became a Christian, they were thrown out of their Jewish family, they were thrown out of their Greek family, they were thrown out of their Roman family. They were thrown out. And Paul would say, Well, you got a new family. We're all now sisters and brothers. God is our father, you know, Mary's our mother. And all the saints who are our brothers and sisters. So these are, they're not dead. You know, Paul the Sixth is his body's over there, but he's fully alive in the risen Christ. St. John Paul II, uh, Pope John the 23rd, his body's upstairs. I want to see it. He did more in four years for short fat men. <laughs> <laughs> the world loved that little fat man. Uh, really, they loved him. But his body is exposed upstairs. But that's his body. He is fully alive in the risen Christ. So please get to know the saints, talk to them, pray to them, ask them to pray for you, pray for all of us, intercede for them. And it's just a thrill to be here uh, as we pray for the people of Hungary. Uh, it's a thrill to be here uh, where where's Peter, Peter is buried. His bones are here. But praise God. <laughs>